only three weddings like what happened what is good guys welcome to my channel so in today's video we are doing a recap of episode 10 and 11 all along a line us of a let's get into it let's get into it so marissa and ramsey so marissa we, we see that the girl is saying she's sick she's on a monthly cycle which happens every month and i'm sure everybody knows this already but ramses has something to complain about he's basically like i think it's definitely has to do with the birth control because he wanted her to get birth control but she doesn't want to and obviously so, you know she gotta go through a monthly cycle so he's basically complaining and nagging to the girl that you know you can't get intimate you don't want to be touchy it's like she's on a period she is sick it's like can you compromise that is not about ramses it's always about him he never thinks about his partner like there's no compromisation with him he has so much to nag about Her man is obsessed with just getting it down all the time and marissa is like i'm not a machine and he's basically like this you know this type of scenario that's happening you know he's thinking about it long term like could this affects our future this is a big thing because marriage is such a big decision he definitely wants to kind of call it up with marissa so he's always trying to come up with something because i'm tired he had issues with the military her military occupation he had issue with the girl taking up birth control he has issue using protection like he's just a headache for me so i feel like marissa can do better like girl you can do better finally alice gets to meet tim's parents and like i thought like the meeting was great on i didn't know about tim and alex like whenever they have like a big argument you know we never get the full picture we never even get the picture at all we just get a scene where they're arguing about what happened and it's like we don't know so i don't understand like why netflix would do a show like this and not give us you know everything but i get it because this time the cameras were off i mean they don't have cameras on all the time but even the last conversation we didn't get it either so it's like why are they doing this we need like to make the show to make us understand what these people are arguing about we need to see the scenes i have a lot to say okay some things happen in regards to my parents that I didn't really appreciate. What? He calls Alex, you know, sit down. He's like pissed that, you know, when the cameras are off, you went to sleep. My parents, they drove here 10 hours. And she's like, you know, I spoke to your parents for four hours. I was tired. I just got out of work. And, you know, she went to sleep. And he's very angry because he compares it with, you know, when he was meeting her parents, like he put in all the work. He woke up, went grocery shopping, did the barbecue, prepared the food, and he even washed the dishes. He's saying like he did what he had to do for his her own family and she has to reciprocate the same energy, which is correct. Alex, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure Alex knew the parents were coming. So if you know that his parents are coming, you should have got yourself ready. So in that area, I feel like Tim was, is right. And with that in mind, I'm glad we can at least agree that I don't ever want to see you again. Calm down, calm down. If you want to break it off, you can, but you don't need to be so harsh. It was very, it was very drastic and lack of emotion, just like F you, bye. Basically, she was very exhausted from work. She feels tired all the time. Maybe going to get checked, you know, because of lack of iron. He talked about, you know, there was a day, I think after that day, you know, it seemed like there was an issue with her car and he texted her and she kind of texted about it's an issue of, the car he basically said that she wasn't responsive to the text and her explanation was that you know she didn't like if you had an issue with me not responding you should have let me know like she basically just went to sleep you know because he she, she already told the guy that the car is fixed but it's, it seemed like he texted something else about the car and it's kind of like you know there's some text that it text it's like some text that you get like you don't really need to reply to it's like you know you've already answered the question you have a text that's what i saw um but you should have replied and if you had an issue, you could have just said, you know, why are you not replying to me? Because of that issue, you know, with the parents, because she didn't reciprocate the same energy. She didn't put any effort into, you know, meeting Tim's parents. He cut it off and said, you know, I never want to see you again. But then never want to see you again was very drastic for me. It's like, you know, Alex is human too. Like, can we just break up um, in a better manner? Not just saying you don't want to see the person again. And saying you don't want to see the person again, like you are on TV show. You are definitely going to see each other again so stop tim you're gonna see her in a reunion and uh, you also saw the next day in the party so mm. then another thing that pissed alex off is like she basically said like she's not gonna let she's not gonna introduce him unless she's sure that they're gonna get married so they're gonna introduce him to her father like her father is kind of sick 
and he same even like said that scary letter and that's the thing about watching these shows like you know if you're gonna put in all this effort make the parents you know draw some uh, make the parents love you as well and then at the end you break up with them it's a lot it's a lot to take in but it is what it is next we have tyler and ashley as i said in the other video if ashley does say yeah to tyler yeah love is blind because there's a lot of cons in this relationship there's a lot of there's a lot there's too much with the tyler situation and there's even more receipts coming out about tyler so i don't know so tyler basically admitted that she eats sperm donated to his friends who are like lesbian because they couldn't and they couldn't afford you know you know sperm donate you couldn't afford it so he decided to do it for free i they couldn't afford sperm donor that's that was god telling me you know help someone else just say you wanted to help that's all you didn't need to say go say you want to help them because how can god say that do the kids know what you look like i don't think so the lies on screen i don't think so is you know it's a easy way to hide the truth because i don't think so it's like eh maybe i don't know but the answer is very is if you can basically answer the question they they know how you look like we've seen the videos we've seen you tyler we've seen what you've done so like now that all the receipts are out like i don't know what's going to happen the reunion like so in terms of ashley and tyler like they, both episode 10 and 11 they seem very like they've kind of agreed to be together but we're going to see the reunion like what really happened are they really together after the year mm, i don't know i don't know i don't know but the receipts are out there <laughs> for ashley to make the right decision you think like you're ready to get married in two weeks yeah mm -hmm. i want you to be like an active listener an active partner i don't want to have to like always have to be the first one to start a deep conversation i haven't read i haven't had a chance to okay we have hannah and nick i think both episodes hannah and nick are like the main couples with issues and I'm tired of Hannah. Like I'm really tired of Hannah. Like every conversation they have is interrogation. She's just trying to knock this guy down. Like Nick did nothing. Like we know he's, he's you know, he's immature. Like he has a lot of grown up to do. But that is all. He didn't do anything to you. If you don't want him, just say you don't want him. Rather right? interrogate him every time. Like it's every day she's trying to prove that she's better than this guy. Like she made it. Actually later on she tells us like you know I turned you from a boy to a man. Mm -hmm. Nick has been saying this all through, like he's ready to learn, he's ready to, you know, change for her, but like the way Hannah is going about it is giving interrogation. You know, you do think I'm maybe sometimes like a level below you. I just want to be treated as an equal. There's I think you get treated like an equal and you start contributing like an equal. But sometimes I feel like at 28 years old you should know how to do things, so it just frustrates me. I couldn't believe what I was watching on TV, but I was brutal. Brutal. Like Nick is torn down. Like I feel, I don't, I feel for him. They have like a team party kind of thing. It's giving Gatsby kind of team party. Tim and Alex, I didn't know. Like I thought, like once you break up, like you won't see each other anymore. Um, onto the reunion, but Alex and Tim came to the meetup. Alex tells the girls that you know it's kind of over between her and Tim, and she basically says he's a coward. I agree. He's a coward because you know he basically asked the father for the hand in marriage yeah i feel like that was cowardness why well, can you ask the father how to and later on you're like i don't want to see you again the energy it doesn't really matter monica said she talked to steven as well steven didn't come steven did not come but anyway monica tells her that she talked to steven and they kind of clear things over but they never get back together of course <laughs> don't do that monica and katie answers the chat so the thing is like there were way more people in the pods like why is it only katie that came in Katie and this other military guy that I liked, I forgot his name, Bruno or something. The only two people came from the pod squad. It's like, you could bring in more people to create a little bit more drama, but no. Katie enters the chat and we see like Hannah's like, you know, Katie's my best friend in the world. And we know why Hannah's saying that. Like, if Katie, if Katie was your best friend, we'd have known, we'd have known but we didn't, I guess maybe they didn't show us. Because before they were, when they were getting ready for the party, she asked, you know, um, Hannah asked Nick that, you know, who are you excited to see? And he basically said, you know, the only person I had connection with was Katie. So definitely want to talk to her because they, it seemed like they talked for a few days and then she, he didn't see her. He didn't see her again. Um, So she basically, he basically wanted to know, like, what's up, which is relevant. Like, this is an experiment. We got to know everything that's going on because it's about connection at the end of the day. It's, you got you to gotta talk to the people that you talk to. Um, already, especially in that situation where the person kind of goes to you. Gary basically tells um, Hannah and every girl that, oh my god, Nick is so cute. Nick is so cute. Like she said it a hundred times. And, you know, that's a bit too much, Katie. Like, what are you trying to do? 
what are you trying to do nick basically asked you know why did you kind of cut it off i didn't see you a few days after we talked and she basically she cut it off because you know he wasn't mature enough then but you should have told him in the past you should have told him like i want to cut it off like i don't really see maturity there you should have told him in the pods and then she basically said like, you're such a good guy like you're you know but you kind of use your charm a little bit too much and it's giving cockiness but you have like so much in you that you can you can definitely do better and you, and then she basically said you know i can see that you're a good person and i can see that you're growing like this girl is giving katie is giving um nick more affirmation than hannah hannah just being the guy down every day but katie is seeing the good in nick like you, you're not mature but it's definitely you can definitely do more which is great for nick to hear a little bit of boost that he needs because hannah is just breaking him down 24 7 and Hannah also speaks to Asha about Nick, like, oh my god, like, he doesn't get to see the fun side of me because, you know, he lacks initiative, you know, when it comes to intimacy, like, he lacks, it was like, she was like, he lacks a lot of things, and it's so frustrating, and now she's like, you know, you know, you need to let him see the fun side, like, Hannah, I don't, there's no fun side in you, so I don't know what she's talking about, like, Nick is a chill guy, I'm sure, you know, if you were a little bit more considerate, maybe... <laughs> You get to show your fun side, but half of the time you're just killing the guy. Both Garrett and Tyler, Taylor, they're like scientists. You know they're supposed to be really smart, intelligent, but Garrett, mm. <laughs> Garrett, maybe he's just smart in the in this you know occup um, occupation area, but in terms of this area, you you ain't that smart. You ain't that smart. So Garrett basically tells Taylor like that's not about what I don't understand. How did Taylor find out about a text? I guess Garrett told her why would you tell her anyway so gary tells taylor that you know his ex texted him and he liked the text and then you know taylor is all crying and everything but this is even before they went into the into the party and when they went into the party they started speaking about the situation to taylor and ashley and he gary said something else like i don't know like he's supposed to be a smart guy so gary was like spilled and spilled the beans i didn't spill to his own girl so he basically said, you know, my ex texted me, I texted her back. And then Taylor's like, uh-oh, 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 this is not what you told me. You told me that you didn't like her text. But you're saying like there's a difference between just liking it and actually responding with words. Like I didn't think there was a difference there. Ah! Those are facts, these are not details. Tony's yeah. very fucking- Taylor's like, why are you lying? This is a semantic thing. The point is like- To you? A whole bunch of lies that didn't make sense. A whole bunch of lies that wasn't smart. Taylor is like, culpable. And then he's like, yeah, let me just gonna be real now. <laughs> you know, you got me. <laughs> Anybody could have got you, Gary, like you're full of lies. After the meet, they go home. Hannah is already angry at Nick. Like, what did Nick do? She's basically like, you know, I see you are my best friend in the whole wide world. Talking for like over 30 minutes. Like, what were you guys talking about? And he basically went straight with it. Gave like the full summary saying like, you know, we just talked about our times in the pods all this and that there was really nothing much to it and she was angry she was like you know what you told me there was just three seconds but you guys were there for like whole 30 minutes what are you talking about let me know that right now and then he's like do you even trust me like why are we getting married if you don't trust me um and she's like you know i just don't trust my friend like she's disrespected me like yeah katie the area that katie disrespected her was the whole like you know nick is so cute telling everyone that nick is so cute is like you're doing too much but the conversation she had with nick there was nothing there like there was really nothing there she's basically annoyed that you know it looks like they were having a good time in the conversation i don't know were they supposed to be sad like they, they had good connection so the conversation will be pretty much okay you know i turned into a boy into a fucking man i you, you done turned everything me into for you. a boy everything to a man. man i think you're literally you've only met for like less than a month how did you turn this guy from a boy to a man like what did you do except turn this guy into a depressed human being oh she's putting it all on him she's saying the reason she's not showing her fun side is because of you know his immaturity but like it's it's on you if you're not showing your fun side because you're always showing your frustration <laughs> your frustration and interrogation side all the time like it's on you it's not on nick so now nick and hannah they meet hannah's friends then the woman's like looks at me and she's like oh look you're, look at your girl she's so jealous i want to marry you i yeah. would love to marry you it's just sometimes i just like question things it makes me think if you're if we should get married you know? yeah i've never want to share anything that you don't ever feel comfortable sharing but like you can share how you felt if you'd like go ahead you got the floor nick basically said like you know there's some conversation that you know very minuscule but it gets escalated like it's a big deal so and then hannah hannah is always mentioning this dog situation like i don't know she's <laughs> she's stuck on this dog situation so hannah mentions that dog situation that you know it was very disrespectful going to this old 60 year old lady 
Like, why are we going back to this again? Like, there was nothing there. Nana comes up as snappy and aggressive. And it was very uncomfortable to watch. The friends are basically judging on what they see. They don't really get a full picture that their friend, Hana, is interrogating this guy. Like, she's lost on his energy. He has no energy left. Like, the energy is already drained. So, the friends are basically saying that like, Hana doesn't want you to change. She wants you to be who you are, but she wants you to kind of grow up and do these things. Because the only thing she's asking you is that they do actions. Yeah, like, I get it. But there's a way you can lay down. You don't have to lay down in a mean way. Like, in a mean, aggressive, snappy way. And, like, I'm telling you, this meetup was giving him panel interview. It was giving... Nick is trying to get a job and these <laughs> these panelists are grilling him. So Hannah's basically tell her mother that the friends don't like him and I feel like they did the friends didn't get to see the best of Nick because we nobody we didn't get to see the best of Nick because half of the time Nick is on screen, he's always looking depressed. So that's what the friends saw and the judge based on that. I would too. I would too. Um so she tells the mother that, you know, she, the friends don't like him and she doesn't think like they're compatible nick you know doesn't get a, a humor like i don't know what humor hannah has there's no humor you're making the guy sad and me sad all the time just i, I feel like i'm teaching him how to love and i'm teaching him how to be in a relationship and that's not very fair to me i feel like i'm teaching him how to love like girl you're teaching him how to be miserable you extremely say that you're a confident person and i make you unconfident when i think it's just ego and it's delusion it's just like you just can't see how i feel she goes back to that list she goes back to that list that we saw in the episodes back about the dog situation again like during the dog situation she wrote all this list about nick he didn't have social awareness lacks respect maturity there's no confidence confidence versus ego like is the ego too much she wrote all these five things and she mentions it and the way my girl has her nose crossed her legs was giving therapy sessions don't shade for no reason it's just the truth it's not the truth it's but, my truth but you see how you're always demeaning you're always talking down on me hannah really wants nick to get a little bit aggressive but she said, said no. He said no. He said not today. He said, I know you now. And I'm not going to fight. What are your responsibilities in life? When do you make the initiative? She just questions him to just make him feel like he's stupid, he's worthless. That's, that's what she was trying to do. And she gets really angry because, you know, Nick is not falling into the trap that he wants, that she wants him to fall into. Nick is giving reservation. He's giving reserve. He's giving up. Don't have time. I'm not going to. Not today, Deb. Not today, Satan. And she's like, I don't understand you. And she and in her in her confessional, she was like, she's feeling manipulated. Like, no one manipulated you, Hannah. She's feeling manipulated and weak. You know, Hannah, you are not weak. You are not weak. Like she said, Nick is not open and honest. Nick has been very, very honest. He's been very consistent to me. She tells him that, you know, they're not gonna get married. And Nick is shocked. Nick is like, you know, I thought we were gonna get married. You know, I was gonna change for you, all this and that. And Nick, we can see that the guy is torn and broken. He basically said that maybe he didn't do as well as he, he should have. And in the confessional, Nick, com Nick said that, you know, he's, he was very real and he really didn't want to marry her and he wouldn't say no in the altar. And Nick is out, like justice for Nick. I pray for his mental health. <laughs> Ashley basically said that, you know, she wants to be with him. He's worth it. He's a reward. Okay, Ashley, let's see how that goes for you. And even her mother was like, you know, Tyler is such a good man and all this. It's like, what do you see that I don't see? What do you see that I don't see? Why would I meet Ram's parents here? Man? Um, I think Ram's parents divorced, but we didn't see, like, Marissa didn't get to meet any of them yet. If I don't see friends or any type of relative meeting up with your partner, I know, like, it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's not gonna work. She said it would be nice to buy her more flowers because, you know, what if Ram didn't bring any flowers when, you know, they met her mother it should also be something that she should be telling him to do but she should he should be doing it anyway because obviously she's gonna do the same thing for his mom as well and she also complains that Ram is not really putting much effort in the wedding preps and he replies that you know i'm just focusing on what's more important which is you know about us that we did which is about sex like that's all that that's the most important thing he's talking about sex he's talking about intimacy that's all my guy take cares about. He's not planning the wedding. He's prioritizing what is important. And the marriage is like, prepping the marriage is important. Like, I'm going to work. I'm in school. I'm doing this and that. And I'm still planning for... He's giving lazy. He's giving, you know, are you a man? Like, I don't see it. He's like, you know, with this going on, like, I don't want to be in the future carrying out the load, carrying out the workload, carrying out the mental load in the relationship can you do your part as a man so rem is doubting the game 
he's not really sure why he's doubting he knows he loves her and you know he does want to get married but you know there's just something and then she marries says like you know you know outside influence can affect you know your thoughts like nobody knows us we know each other do you not affect our relationship and nothing is making sense to me because i feel like rem is just finding every way to end this marriage he's done it multiple times so marissa can you just get the pro get with the program she's trying to give you these messages can you just open up your eyes she marissa is giving him hope saying that you know it's all good also against the world kind of vibes rem is he's not into this marriage he's gonna say no like he's gonna say no not a lot of weddings not like the uk one the uk one we had six weddings we had three no's three yeses but this one only three weddings like what happened what happened everybody got keep breaking up